Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now. That experience he has been able to secure in God. So, it's an experiential sound. He says, the Lord is my light. That's where I'm going to stop today. We're going to see the experience of God as light. Meanwhile, meanwhile, in this verse alone, we have a couple of possible areas of encounters. He's telling us that he knows the Lord as his light. You will now discover that in the context of light, there is this personalized appendage, this personalized context. Uh, he did not say our light, did not say their light. He said the Lord is my light. I found him in my intercourse with him to be capable of light. And, and, and that's what I want to talk about. He also gives us another clue here. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. We'll not be talking about the salvation aspect, but if you have met God as your light, if you have met Him as your salvation, these two dimensions of experience that is in God is the antidote to fear. So He says, the Lord is my light, the Lord is my salvation, whom shall I fear? If you still find fear locking in your heart, maybe situations rose up against you, and uh, uh, involuntarily your response to those situations was fear uh, it is suggestive of the fact that there are layers of experience of god as light and as salvation that you are still deficient in now, so i want to build a case right now the lord is my light now in this presentation he he calls light as a metaphor not as though the Lord looks like light. Not that the Lord has light. But the Lord is light. It is, it's one thing for us to say, yes, we, the Lord has light. And that is supported by scripture. The Lord looks like light. <laughs> but this guy is, is using a metaphor here. And, and you will need to have some spiritual knowledge in order for you to be able to justify uh, the use of light as a sufficient metaphor which captures an aspect of the experience of God. So I may need to take us to the book of um, Ephesians chapter 5 so that we can do the uh, groundwork, the underground. We can, we can ferry ourselves into the underground, undercurrent of insight that led to this statement, the Lord is my light. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 13. If you are there, you may wish to turn. He said, But all things are reproved that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So he's telling us about the nature of light. Light has a capacity to unveil. It has the capacity to reveal. And anything whatsoever, in any context whatsoever, that is revelatory, that, that unmaxes, that uncovers, can be regarded as light. And because light unmaxes, because it uncovers, it is a substance that is used to test things, used to reprove things. So because when we are running a test, I happen to be a chemist and uh, mostly you will need a chemist in, uh, in manufacturing situations where there is a need for quality control. So we should be able to test beyond uh, the way the product looks at face value and to get to understand its intrinsic qualities, its, chem its chemical composition and all of that. It means we need to journey beyond face value into actual investigation of salt. And the Bible says that light is used to reprove things, used to test things. And if there is going to be a manifestation of the actuality of its substance, we'll need to bring light. There are many people that can masquerade in darkness and put up a show in darkness, but in the midst of light, that show will not sell because light has a capacity to make 
manifest that which is hidden. If you're a Bible student, you must have realized that Jacob married in the night. He married in the night. The moment light showed up, he protested that this was not a product for which he labored so long. It's possible there's a, there's a scope of, of life that can take place in darkness. There's a scope of light. There's an arrangement that can survive in the darkness. But the moment light is introduced, and it will survive very well, but the moment light is introduced, it now makes manifest. That's the thing about light. If you bring light into the crucible, it makes manifest. So when the sum is now said that the Lord is my light, he was saying that in his intercourse with God, in his experience with God, there were several things that he was in the dark about. And it was the Lord himself that manifested as the illumination that uncovered uh, those, those matters. And if you are also a student of the Bible, you will see this, the account of the salvation of Saul. He was, he was given authority from the chief priests in Jerusalem. And that was the first time in the entire Bible that um, a militia was set up and empowered by the by the authority of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council, to bring to order any Jew whatsoever that was operating outside of the requirements of Judaism and was beginning to align with the philosophy of Christianity. So he was the first captain of that militia that was put in place and he had secured letters from Jerusalem that authorized him to bring Jews bound and his first to Jerusalem, either men or women, and his first mission was international. He was going to Damascus in, in Assyria. So he had, he, had, he had all the diplomatic backings that was required for him to... He was operating like Interpol. Even across borders, he had powers. And, and he, you know, it was authorized from the authorities. <laughs> so it would take an authority to, to restrain him. So his authority came from the letters. But the restraining power came from the Lord. And when the Lord came, he manifested as light. When the Lord manifested as light, you will notice that he was in the company of a group of guys that he had picked to be part of the militia. But the dealings that he had were not dealings that were corporate. The dealings were personal. When light came into that place, the light was only directed at Saul. The other guys suffered from the, uh, the energy that was dissipated and they fell from horseback and fell to the ground. But it was only Saul that heard the voice. Uh, uh, concealed in the light was the voice. And the voice spoke to Saul in a most personal way, calling him by name Saul. Saul. So light is capable of a very specific manifestation. Light is capable of a very individual operation. Light is capable of a surgery that can strike and open the darkness in the hearts of humankind. He can leave the crowd and focus on an individual and rip him bare and open up the things that have been concealed about him. That was the kind of surgery that took place in the life of Saul and he fell from horseback and the light was so bright that it blinded his physical eye. It was as though, in order for him to see, he, he had to be made blind. And that was what light did. Meanwhile, there was a reality this guy was operating in before light showed up. And that reality was operating in had empowered him. He was full of pride. He was, mm -hmm. he was in charge. He did not see that anything strong enough could stop him from his mission until light came. As we are going to see... In the moment of time as we study the bible you will find out that a man that has light will believe in jesus but a man that does not have light will crucify jesus in every generation satan is going to have foot soldiers from the body of christ every generation and the reason is because light will not come to everybody no it won't <laughs> satan will have people to, to join his army at every point in time because light is so specific 
that it will not visit every individual. So you will notice that Saul was brought down on horseback and he was left blind after the surgical work that light did upon him. And the reason why he did not die from the encounter was because he acknowledged that in the midst of the light, there was a Lord there. Who are you, Lord? So he migrated from under the influence of the letters and he migrated to the influence of the Lord. He had found something purer than the authority that the letters conferred upon him. All of this surgery took place because he had an encounter with God as light. So one of the valid experiences of God that we can have is the encounter with him as light. Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now.